future class of 2026, our eighth grade class of 2022. Thank you. You may be seated. Many of you were seated, but you got up, so thank you. Good evening, everybody. My name is John Flanagan. I'm the principal here at Chester Academy, and on behalf of our students and staff, I would like to welcome you to the eighth grade moving up ceremony for the future class of 2026 and our current eighth grade class of 2022. Now, at this time, I'd like to welcome up to the stage eighth grade students Giacomo Abate and Shane Rivera, who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Giacomo and Shane. And at this time, to honor America, I'd also like to welcome up to the stage Tristan Richards to perform our national anthem. Please rise. <laughs> oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars do the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof to the night that our flag was still there Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave O'er the land of the free 
and the home of the brave. Great job, Tristan. Please be seated, everybody. Wow, we're off to a great start. Unbelievably impressive. Before we begin tonight, I'd like to point out our emergency exits, which are in all corners of the room. Um, if in the need we had to evacuate the building, we would direct you to the nearest exit. I'd also like to acknowledge members of our Board of Education that are both here and were unable to make it here tonight. So first, the President of our Board of Education, Mr. Frank Sambitz. Our Vice President, Ms. Sandy Nagler. Our Board Trustee, Mr. John Pashnick. And a big congratulations to Mr. Pashnick, who's retiring from the board after 17 years. Thank you for your service. <laughs> Unable to attend tonight, uh, Mr. Keith Bridewieser and Ms. Dawn Guevara. <laughs> but joining us in here tonight and joining the Board of Education this year, Ms. Kim DiCurcio. We also have another board member who will be joining as of July 1st, and that is Ms. Caroline Nagersmith, who is not able to be here tonight. At this time, I'd also like to acknowledge members of our administration who are here tonight, our superintendent of schools, Mr. Dennis Petrolak, And a big congratulations to Mr. Petrolak, who is retiring from 37 years in school public education. And somebody who I personally owe a lot to, who's done a lot for me in my career, and I thank you very much. Unable to be here tonight, our assistant superintendent, Kathy O'Hara. Our business official, Mr. Uh, Aaron Brennan. Our Director of Technology, Mr. Ed Spence. But here in attendance, our Director of PPS, Ms. Rachel Loftus. And before we move on, I'd like to give a big thank you for somebody that's done so much for this ceremony and is here to my left, Miss Jennifer Cuomo, our middle school counselor. I'd be remiss if I didn't recognize school secretary, Miss Kathy Battiato, who does so much for just about everything we do. And then a few other names, uh, Miss Patty Goodrich, Miss Kim Fusco, Mr. Nick Patel, who's back there on the board, Mr. John Szynski, the tech team, uh, Mr. Matt DeRosa, the buildings and ground team for all of their support. And a very important person who I know you guys all know and love, our athletic director and assistant principal, Mr. Aguilar. who's also stepping in tonight in a tech role, which is awesome. So thank you, Mr. Aguilar. Uh, at this time, I'd like to acknowledge our middle school faculty members who are here tonight. So I ask you to please stand and be recognized, our middle school faculty. They're very popular because they don't make you take Regents exams. <laughs> and last but not least, I'd like to thank the Chester PTSA uh, for all of their support over the course of the school year, which including just even la uh, a couple of weeks ago, providing all the food and cooking for our middle school field day, and also for providing refreshments for after tonight's ceremony. So thank you very much to the PTSA.
Now, before we continue to roll with the program here, I have a few remarks I'd like to make to our, to our class here, to our eighth graders. So good evening, eighth graders. To quote legendary singer Barry Manilow, it looks like we made it. Now, I fully realize not many of you may know who Barry Manilow even is. I get it. Uh, maybe I should have used a quote from Ariana, one of Ariana Grande's songs, but you know what? I don't think they would be appropriate for any of, you know, the, the, for basically for our journey together here. You know, I don't want to use songs to describe our journey like Problem or No Tears Left or Break Free, you know, because that, that I don't feel like sums it up. So I'm going to go with Looks Like We Made It. Uh, so, as I said, you probably have no idea who Barry Manilow is. In fact, I think I'm getting to the age where many of your parents barely remember who good old Barry is. But at one time, he was a really big star. I mean, at one time, in our society, if you wanted to watch a movie, you had to go to a video store. Do you guys know what a video store is? Some of you, some of you have read about them. You had to go to a video store and rent one. And it could only be played on something called a VCR. I don't know if any of you guys know what a VCR is. Um, and basically, when you guys went to the video store to get that tape for your VCR, all the really good movies that you wanted to see were always sold out. So it, it, it was a frustrating process. If you really needed to talk to someone, you couldn't really call them on their cell phone. You had to pick up the old home phone, the one that some of you still have, but nobody ever answers. Uh, you didn't get a chance to like snap them and just get right in contact with them. That, that didn't exist then. Um, if there was a really technolo technologically advanced person, you could beep them, though. Does anyone know what a beeper is? So, uh, basically, when I was younger, you know, we actually had to watch television commercials. Do any of you guys watch commercials? Some of you still do? We couldn't just DVR them and fast forward through them. My point here is, at one time, all the things that I mentioned were innovative, including Barry Manilow. Um, they were state of the art, they were trend setting. But society always finds a way to evolve and to make things better. And as students, you now use technology on a daily basis. You have access to whatever you want at the click of your finger. And you're only in ninth grade. Just look at our society today. We have decentralized cryptocurrency, digital streaming of just about anything you want. When you owe someone money, like me when I was younger, when I owed someone money, I used to use the excuse that I left my wallet at home. But basically, you can't do that now because you can just Venmo them. So even when, uh, you know, we, we even have people who are starting to take their vacations in outer space. I'm sure you've seen this, you know, taking flights to the moon. My point here is, as you look to high school, I want you to take, you know, a frame of mind that goes beyond thinking about the 22 credits that you need to earn in the five Regents exams that you're required to pass. I want you to think about how, as a citizen of this society, you can become uh, part of an ever-changing world that's full of innovative thinkers and leaders. Be open to learn, uh, to be open to learn as much as you can and allow yourself to work out of the box. We want you to embrace new technologies and to always give 100%. Just remember, 30 years from now, Ariana Grande may hold no relevance to your children. Streaming might seem antiquated and Disney might have a theme park on the moon. You know, so times could be very different. One of my favorite movie characters of all time is a guy by the name of Ferris Bueller, who, by the way, I encourage none of you to be like if you haven't seen the movie. But he stated something that resonates with me all the time, and I, and I use this quote a lot. At the end of the movie, he says, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you might just miss it. So, well, class of 2026, life's about to start moving pretty fast for you, and I believe that you guys are tremendously talented, hardworking, and intelligent. And if you put your mind to it, there's nothing that you can't accomplish. So congratulations, enjoy your summer, and we can't wait to see you again in September on the other side of the building. Now at this time, I'd like to welcome up our first eighth grade spe speaker, Mr. Austin Dowdy.
that works? Okay. Alright, I'll hold it. No, I can hold it, it's fine. Alright. No, I, I can hold it. Come on, give me. <laughs> Bye. Alright. Good evening to Chester Academy. Greetings administrators, teachers, staff members, family, friends, and graduates of the class of 2026. My name is Austin Dowdy. I would like to thank you all for coming here to our eighth grade moving up ceremony. I'd like to begin by looking back on the things we have accomplished along the way. From learning the basics of our ABC to learning about the journey of Peter Stuyvesant all the way through Pythagorean theorem. As we set our minds adrift across a sea of education, we learn and grow over the years to prepare us for the unknown abyss. All the good times and challenges we face have given us steel-like strength to prepare us for high school. Fellow eighth graders, we have been through so many obstacles. Some, in hindsight, were small, like trying to figure out how to open our lockers. Others turned out to be much more challenging. On March 14, 2020, what we thought was going to be a day off turned out to be the start of a worldwide pandemic. This meant that we had to deal with remote learning over the years. It was interesting looking back on elementary school to them being in middle school with remote learning. Nobody really saw it coming. Eighth grade, however, was like a saving grace from the pandemic. We were finally allowed to come back to school, which made us feel much more passionate about our work, doing the simplest of tasks in school felt great. We had a lot of good times in eighth grade. We worked very hard to achieve our goals and succeed in our grades. All of us have improved and have become smarter and stronger throughout this past school year. Eighth grade was an experience like never before. We have gotten through it and are all eager to see what awaits us. I would like to give a shout out to my A.A. Mr. Roseanne, along with my family for always being there for me. Very good, very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. And uh, I think Ms. Gina, Ms. Gina, Ms. Gina, she wanted to give me a shout out, so she's also really good. Yeah. <laughs> she's back there, so you're waving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And thank you to our teachers, faculty members, and construction workers for everything you have done. And with all that being said, look at ninth grade, here we come. Thank you, Austin. And you may need to teach me a little bit about that Pythagorean theorem, because I'm not very good with it. <laughs> and now at this time, I'd like to welcome up to the stage to address our eighth grade students, our superintendent of schools, Mr. Dennis Petrolek. Amazing job, Austin. Great job. Thank you for kicking off the evening and giving me such a difficult act to follow. <laughs> so good evening and congratulations to our eighth grade students for successfully completing middle school. And congratulations to all the parents and other family members who are here tonight celebrating this important milestone. You've all earned it, as Austin pointed out. The transition from middle school to high school is an important time in a young person's life. This is the point where young people move from childhood to adulthood. It is a time of awakening, of self-awareness, and a time 
when one begins to determine their life's path. It is a time when we all really have to start to answer the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? The answer to that question will be different for every person. Some of you may want to be professional people and will understand that the path to becoming a professional is through college. Others may choose to become artists, craftsmen, or skilled tradespeople, and you will realize that your path involves many hours of practice and training. Some of you will struggle or vacillate, go back and forth with different ideas about what you want to do with your lives, and that's okay too, as long as you have a direction and are moving forward. In all cases, everyone wants the same thing, to be happy and to be successful. Since I believe that we all know what happiness is, and I see a lot of it in this room tonight, I would like to take a moment to talk about success. So please advance to the next slide. What is success, and how does one achieve it? Success is one of those things that is hard to describe, but easy to see. If I ask you to think about someone who is successful, I am sure that each one of you will think about different people for different reasons. And this is natural because success reflects a person's values, and values are relative and individual. While we all share some values, the weight that we assign to these values varies from person to person. So the definition of success is different for each one of us. Regardless of how you define success, there is one universal truth. Success is not an accident. It is a result of a specific set of habits and experiences that are often hidden from view. Next slide, please. In this sense, success is like an iceberg. Success can seem big and grandiose. Like an iceberg, it can dwarf other objects around it. It can be a wonder of nature and awesome to look upon. But did you know that when you see an iceberg, you only get to see about 10% of the iceberg? 90% of the iceberg is underwater and is unseen. So just like the tip of an iceberg, that is only, just like the tip of an iceberg that is only part of a much larger thing, the habits and experiences that form success are often unseen and overlooked, but in fact, they are the majority of what success is made of. So what are the habits and experiences that make success possible? Next slide, please. Dedication. Identify your goals and commit yourself to them. Write them down. Dream about them. Talk about them to those that you care about. Make them a part of everything that you do in life. Let your dreams become your purpose in life. Hard work. Understand that hard work is the engine that keeps your dreams in good working order. Understand that anything worthwhile in life is worth working for. Good habits. Have good attendance and always be on time. Have a positive attitude. Always do your best. Be polite and have good manners. We can't be the best at everything that we do in life, but people will always remember and respect you for your good habits. Disappointment. Disappointment is a part of life. And if you have never been disappointed, then you have never truly cared for anything important or truly dared to do anything meaningful. Learn to accept disappointment and then move on and reserve to resolve to learn something positive from every letdown. Sacrifice. A true sign of maturity is understanding that we can't have everything that we want. And sometimes you have to give something up to get something better. This may mean that you don't get to, so to do some things now, but later on you will be rewarded for the intelligent sacrifices that you had made to improve yourself and keep your dreams alive. Failure. All successful people fail at some point in their lives. I've been there too. Don't get hung up on your failure. 
but work to understand why it occurred and use it for your self-improvement. And persistence. Last but not least, be persistent. Never give up. Never give up. Stay dedicated to and focused on your dream. Work hard to learn from mistake, mistakes, disappointments, and failure to become stronger. Have good attendance and be on time. Be reliable and dependable. Always keep a positive attitude. And never give up in any of these areas or on your dreams. Now, as you prepare to move on to high school, I wish you the very best for your future success. So please remember the iceberg illusion and remember that success is just the tip of an iceberg that is kept afloat by good habits and learning positive lessons from your life's experiences. Last slide, congratulations and good luck, class of 2026. Thank you, Mr. Petrolek. I learned early on working for Mr. Petrolek. I, I, I worked with him at the Tuxedo School District as his assistant principal. And on my first day of work, we had an orientation for our incoming ninth graders. And the first thing we did was we went downstairs and put out bagels and donuts. And he taught me a very valuable lesson that I think is very important. It kind of goes along with his speech and what he just did right here, going back and closing the curtain, that nothing is ever below you and that you are always working hard and you will do whatever you need to do to finish the job and make it right. So thank you, Mr. Petrolek. At this time, I'd like to welcome our second speaker of the evening, Ms. Zoe Arnett. Good evening, Chester Academy. Welcome to administration, staff, teachers, family, friends, and the class of 2026. I'm so honored to be speaking at our Moving Up ceremony this year. My name is Zoe Arnett, and I've been going to Chester since I was in kindergarten, along with many of my fellow classmates. We've been through years together <clears throat> as elementary schoolers and middle schoolers. Each of us has been friends, solved problems, and done so much more. Looking around, I have a memory with most of the people sitting in front of me. Today, though, is not just a day to reflect on our past, but to look to our future. In a few short months, we will move on to high school. There will most certainly be things we are going to miss, like our teachers or Mr. Trout's sixth grade belt. It can be a little sad to think about leaving that behind. I know I have memories and moments with everyone that will stay with me, though. At the same time, there will be so many experiences and opportunities in high school that will get us ready for college, jobs, and then living on our own. This world is wide open for us, and we should take advantage of it all. The future may not be what we expect, and we may have some falls. I know that no matter where we land, though, we will always have each other to pick us back up. Look around this auditorium. Every one of us has someone who you can trust and who will always have to pick you back up. I would like to thank everyone who has helped all of us get through middle school. Thank you to all the teachers, guidance counselors, the principal, coaches, our families. They have all been there cheering us on all the way through. They have helped us get our grades back up and fix our schedules. I know that Ms. Cisco has made so many arrangements to help me and other students get our finals done. And Ms. Cuomo is always there when we need her. The staff helps us every day. Ed Helms once said, so long as your desire to explore is greater than your desire not to screw up, you're on the right track. As we move on to high school, we will definitely find new friends and have many new fun experiences. At the same time, we will all be figuring out ourselves and who we really are. I believe that who we were and what we did in middle school doesn't have to define who we are and what we will be in the future. The doors for us are wide open. This is the time to try new clubs and activities to see what we really like to do and to see what we are all capable of. We can't let anyone or anything hold us back. This is the time to broaden our horizons and try everything. The next four years are bright, and we are lucky to be in it together. Congratulations, class of 2026. Thank you. 
And in case you guys didn't know, Zoe just competed for the Nationals in track and field in eighth grade. And that's a huge accomplishment. Congratulations. At this time, I'd like to welcome Mrs. Cuomo up to the microphone here to present the Triple C Award. Good evening. So tonight we have two special awards for two of our eighth grade students. Um, these are from the New York State Office of the Attorney General, and I'm going to read to you how these students qualified to be recommended for this award, and then I will announce our two winners who don't know they're being recognized tonight. For more than 20 years, the Office of the Attorney General has celebrated some of New York's most remarkable young people with the presentation of our Triple C Award. I am proud to carry on this program, which recognizes students for their courage, commitment, and character. I strongly believe that we can help each other thrive by providing support, praise, and encouragement. During the past year, your generation has been cast in the role of trailblazer. From expanding the boundaries of online learning, to finding creative ways to connect and bond with your peers, to accepting the tremendous responsibility of keeping your family, friends, and communities safe by social distancing, you have already changed the world. There is no limit to what you will achieve next. I want to thank you and your fellow students for the inspiration you have provided us all during these difficult times. By facing the challenges that have been thrust upon you with grace and determination, your generation is providing us with much needed hope. To that end, it is my privilege to present you with the Attorney General's Triple C Award in honor of your enduring courage, commitment, and character. I salute your hard work and commend the teachers, parents, guardians, and classmates who assisted in making your success possible. I wish you the very best, and I look forward to seeing the positive impact you will make on our world. And this is signed, warmest regards, Letitia James. So tonight, our two winners are, our first winner is Juan Perez Santiago, if you would please come up. Congratulations, Juan. Is Juan's family here? Wave to me. All right. Great job, Juan. And our second winner for the Triple C Award, please come up, Miley Daza Hernandez. Miley's family? Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Cuomo. And now we, we've almost arrived at that magical moment of the ceremony we, when we present our certificates for our eighth grade graduates here. So at this time, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Aguilar to come on up to the stage to join Mr. Petrolek, Ms. Cuomo, and myself. Uh, Mrs. Cuomo is going to come up, and she's going to call out the names. Mr. Aguilar, uh, Mr. Petrolek, and myself are going to stand at the table. We'll give you your certificate. When you come up, you can walk all the way, take that, take that victory lap all the way across the stage and around so your parents can get a good photo of you and, uh, or maybe a good video. And, um, if, you'd like to, if you'd like to do a pound, you can do a pound. If you, if you want to pass, that's okay as well. So at this time, I'd like to welcome Ms. Cuomo back to the stage.
right, here we go, eighth graders. Giacomo Abate. Erica Alban. Marcus Emil. Zoe Arnett. Brooke Badiato. Brandon B. Ayalarucky. Dylan Bloom. Ray Bonilla. <laughs> Chloe Brown. <laughs> Christian Calloway. Not with us tonight, but Talia Campbell. Sky Castellonia. Michael Catalano. Cameron Chalusian. Ariana Chavez Flores. Ocean Chen. Ethan Cox. Miley Daza Hernandez. Lauren DeVico. Ava Diaz. Austin Dowdy. Edia Enoma. Brian Flores. Ivansa Exum. <laughs> Jossiel Foss. <laughs> Raymond Garcia. <laughs> Eden Garver. Annie Gomez. <laughs> Daniel Gonzalez. Okay. 
David Gonzalez. Akeem Harewood. Dariana Henriquez. Lauren Higgins. Dominic Jean Pierre. Brandon Jenkins. Sage Johnson. Jordan Jones. Nakai Jones. Hayden Juarez. Corey Jurich. Eric Karchenko. Cassie LeBron. Yamalette Lopez Cortez. Natalie Luna Torres. Davy Manfredo. Karsten McLaughlin. Alexander Mendola. Elvin Momani. Avery Morales. James Musco. Paige Niles. Ava Nywinig. Zia Oheen. Jessica Oliveira. Jaden Ortiz. Ella Panabianco. <laughs> Rihanna Patel. <laughs> Rosemary Pena. <laughs> Juan Perez Santiago. Jaden Pimentel Liriano. <laughs> Amibel Reynoso. Well done, sir. Tristan Richards. <laughs> Shane Rivera. Shane Roby. Sean Rocktoff.
Raquel Rojas Brown. Dylan Santangelo. Nevea Sellers. Kyle Shaw. Nicholas Sharp. Brandon Shin. Isaiah Smith. Shanoya Somerville. Sophia Stanley. Karina Sverdlova. Jace Walker. Jenna Wancho. Carter Wood. Ariana Young. Angelica Zapata. Congratulations to our eighth grade students. Thank you, Ms. Cuomo. And thank you to Mr. Aguilar and Mr. Petrolak for helping out. As we conclude tonight's ceremony, I'd like to invite you um, right outside here. We're going to have a little reception. Uh, once again, courtesy of the PTSA. So down in the cafeteria right outside here, you just go out and, and make a right. Um, we will have so, some light refreshments. And once again, I'd just like to say first that it was a wonderful evening, and I really appreciate you being here tonight. Um, I'd like to wish you a safe and happy summer. And most importantly, I'd like to congratulate our future class of 2026, our current eighth grade class of 2022. Congratulations. And that concludes tonight's ceremony. So help yourself to some refreshments and have a good night. <laughs>